Well, I gotta tell ya, in today's broadcast, I'm not really sure where to begin because so many forces are working against us right now. Right now, I've got forces uh, working against specifically my channel here on YouTube and many other conservatives and libertarians do as well, but they are doing everything in their power to hide my information to the point where I have half a million subscribers and little to none of them, I'm talking maybe a couple thousands of you, get the information, I don't know the exact number, but what I do know is when I was half the size I was years and years and years ago, I got quadruple the amount uh, of clicks and shares. And that's not a coincidence. We already know what's happening with the Twitter files, how they're coordinating or, or the, how the FBI is working with Twitter and how they are working to silence particular opposition that they don't like. Well, now I've got bombshell information via a letter that some of our congressional leaders have just published issuing a threat to social media stating do this or else we're going to fill in the blank. It's really going to chill you to your very core. And I can't even imagine, even if you're a Democrat, how you can go along with some of these things. It's above and beyond anything I've seen. But just a quick break from my sponsor. If your New Year's resolution is about improving your health, then listen up. Surveys show that weight loss and exercise are the most popular resolutions every year. In fact, a recent study has revealed that 48% of those who made New Year's resolutions said that they wanted to lose weight. Unfortunately, that same study has revealed that 80% of those people who make New Year's resolutions fail within the first year. But wait and listen closely because I am going to give you a tip that helps keep you out of the failing majority. You have the ability to reach your weight management goals and you can do that by getting this keto powder at ketowithlisa.com. This supplement supports you in attaining and maintaining a healthy body weight so that you can help elevate your own body's levels of ketotones. Keto Elevate helps by suppressing your appetite, giving you more energy, and controlling your metabolism. In fact, tens of thousands of Americans have already turned to this to help them maintain their weight. So what do you have to lose? It's very simple. If you want to try it out, all you have to do is go to KetoWithLisa.com. And by the way, right now you can get up to 51% off. Uh, and not only that, but they are also giving away three bonus items, uh, free shipping, free VIP live health fitness coaching for life, and a free new e-report, the top 14 Kenogenic Foods. On top of that, they also have a 60-day money-back guarantee. In addition, with every single purchase that you order, uh, they will help provide a nutritious meal to a hungry child in need, in your honor, by the way. Uh, but don't miss out on this special offer by going to KetoWithLisa.com. If you want more information, it's found in the description box below. All right back to the broadcast. So let's dive into what's really going on here. And, and I gotta say, I um, I have been warning about this for years and every year, instead of things getting better, specifically regarding censorship, they get worse and worse and worse and worse. And I have not seen any kind of major headway other than the most recent headway via Twitter where Elon Musk bought and took over Twitter. And now we have documented evidence that what I've been saying for years is actually happening. Everything from the FBI working with Twitter to silence certain information that they don't like, uh, from Twitter employees doing everything they can, creating new rules on their platform in order to ban a sitting president, which by the way, gives unheard of power to a social media in that they can do that to a sitting president. I mean, that's a lot of power. But right now we are seeing the rise of tyranny. These are the kinds of things uh, that we saw in, in maybe not via the internet because they didn't have it back then, but via Mao and Hitler and Stalin, they all censored information just like we're seeing today. And this is why this is one of the most important issues of our time. But with that, I've got a letter today uh, to show you that was written by four members of Congress, Democrat members, uh, and these Democrat members issued a threatening letter to Meta, to Facebook, to social media sites. I wouldn't be surprised if they've written ones to others. 
so far not on the internet or at least made phone calls who knows but they've got this one letter that they've conducted and put together and are sending to facebook saying hey if you do what twitter did basically in a nutshell then uh, there's going to be repercussions for your actions in other words continue to censor conservatives and libertarian in our opposition or else says four leading members of congress take a look where i found it and I found it on uh, jonathanturley.org. Uh, and here's what he says. Censor, this is the headline. Censor or else, Democrat members warn Facebook not to backslide on their censorship. With the, res with the restoration of free speech protections on Twitter, panic has grown on the left that its control over social media can come to an end. Now, some of the greatest advocates of censorship in Congress are specifically warning Facebook not to follow Twitter in restoring free speech to its platform. In a chilling letter from Representative Adam Shifty Schiff, Adrian Carson, another Democrat, Kathy, another Democrat, and Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, another Democrat, Facebook was given a not so subtle threat that reducing its infamous censorship system will invite congressional action. The letter to Meta's president of global affairs, Nick Klieg, is written on congressional stationery as part of our ongoing oversight efforts. And I want you to before I bring up the letter, I want you to really pay attention to what Jonathan Turley said there. And he's saying, look, it's a threat. It's a direct threat to the social media to cite that if you don't do what we say, then there are going to be actions and we're going to, well, do congressional actions. Well, thankfully, we own the House and they're limited on what we can do, at least here soon. But the bottom line is, is these are Democrats, four of them, who are saying Free speech is unacceptable. And for the life of me, if you're a Democrat and listening to this, how can you even be okay with that? Because the tables can turn, right? There could be certain things that we deem, you know, when we're leading in office or whatnot. You'd never want to do that. It should be free speech, which should have the ability to do that so long as we're not harming anybody or inciting violence. Or, or, or spam and porn and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, no. Right? There's, there's things that are illegal by law that you're not allowed to do anyway. We don't need to have these additional things where Congress demands that Facebook censor certain things, which just so happen to be only those on the opposing side. It sounds to me like Democrats want to shut up Republicans and conservatives for their own personal benefit. Because, hey, they're involved, and this is involving other congressional leaders. Specifically, this letter involves other congressional leaders and, and, and candidates who have run for office, and they're saying, keep it down or else we're going to fill in the blank. Sounds more like a politically motivated move than anything else, but this is how tyranny arrives. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of times it's with a thunderous applause because there's Democrats out there going, yeah, do that, do that. Really? You're, you're ushering it. For those of you who are doing that, I have one word for you. Oh, not one word. I, I've got a sentence for you. You're ushering in tyranny and you're doing it on purpose. You're doing it on purpose. Why would you want to do that? And for the life of me, I can't even see how anyone would be okay with that. But I digress. Let's go to the letter. Uh, Congress of the United States. And you can see here too, the president there of Meta, aka Facebook. I'm going to scroll to the bottom real quick real quick the bottom real quick here. Uh, and here are the four sitting members of Congress who should not be in Congress anymore. They should have been voted out a long time ago. But hey, here's the four members of Congress that are pushing for this. But I digress. Let's go on. Following the 2022 midterm elections, we write to urge Meta to maintain its commitment to keeping dangerous and unfounded election denial content off its platform. To that end, we also urge Meta and its leadership to continue the suspension of a former president, Donald Trump's Facebook account beyond January and to carefully monitor and counter the spread of harmful election misinformation, including the big lie about the 2020 presidential election on Facebook. What about... The Democrats' 2016 lie about the presidential election. Notice, notice it's not in this report. It's not anywhere in this. Uh, but basically what they focus on through this letter is how they need to keep Trump off the platform and people who are like Trump. In other words, Republicans, conservatives, and libertarians. 
because Democrats aren't talking about 2016 election, right? So this is politically targeted. If these people really meant what they say, and it was really all about election denialism, then I would include 2016 in that. But you don't. But you don't. So the real nature of this letter, I don't believe, has anything really to do with the election. But it has everything to do with silencing opposition. Otherwise, it would be more fair. But these are sitting members of Congress. I don't care if they're Democrat or not. We have to forget about that. A lot of them are on the same side anyway. Majority of Republicans in Congress are kind of Democrats. But to be open about this and send a letter saying, keep a sitting president off your platform? Wow. Oh, that's a lot of words for four Democrats. But it goes on. For Meta to credibly maintain a legitimate election integrity policy, it is essential that your company maintain its platform ban. Keep that ban on former Trump. We understand that the initial suspension of his account expires in January and that Meta will then make a decision regarding the future of his account. When initially suspending the account, Facebook statement said, if we determine that there is still a serious risk to public safety, we will extend the restriction for a set period of time and continue to reevaluate until that risk is rescinded. Two years later, we can see unequivocally that Trump is still spreading the big lie and thus undermining democracy. Indeed, he has expressed support for pardoning people involved in J6 attack on police, should he ever get the chance. Wow. So this seems more like another attack on Donald J. Trump and more Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah, but they go on. By the way, a majority of it is how bad Trump is and how he spreads misinformation and lies. But hey, never mind the misinformation that, I don't know, Adam Shifty Schiff spread about Russia collusion. What about that? What about that? Right? Here we go. Goes on. Furthermore, the rhetoric extends beyond just the former president to other high profile individuals, which just so happen again to be all Republican. <laughs> we saw in the 2020 term midterm election that candidates who posted the same falsehood about disproven election fraud in 2020 election and expected fraud in 2022 elections were allowed to spread the big lie on Facebook. Unlike other social media platforms, Hmm, what are you referencing there? What are you referencing? Meta's policies do not prohibit posts that make unsubstantial claims about voter fraud. A review by Wa Post, Washington Post, found 18 candidates, again, all Republican candidates, denying the 2020 election result, and 17 candidates claiming the 2020 elections will be rigged or corrupt, posted on Facebook. With none of these posts on Facebook being labeled our challenge, this is highly troubling and an area where Meta, Meta must improve its oversight. Okay, so now it's going beyond Trump onto other candidates. Candidates who, by the way, won some of which won in 2022. So here we have members of Congress attacking other members of Congress, AKA their political opposition, and other leaders on the opposite side. It seems, it's, it, it's not seem, it's politically motivated. There's no even about this. So if you don't follow our Democrat demands, then we're gonna bring in some hearings. If you don't, you know, there's 18 candidates here and 17 candidates here that need to be shut down. They should have never been allowed to run. Excuse me? I thought we were free. Anyone could run, right? Oh, wait. But they're a candidate and somehow their information is not allowed to be shown online. I mean, really? How come Stacey Abrams is still up? Or many others? Good questions. Good questions, you know. They're uh, only talking about election deniers on one side, not on the other. Doesn't seem fair now, does it? It goes on, and I know I talked about this before, but I really have to stress how important this is. Because again, I don't get how people can vote for Democrats at all anymore. I, I just don't get it. How can you do that? You're, you're selling out to straight up tyranny. Selling out to straight up tyranny. And by the way, they both suck. But if I have to pick Republicans or Democrats, I'm going with Republicans, right? But the article goes on to say this because of crap like that. It goes on. A recent review by Bloomberg News that analyzed the Facebook post of every Republican running for Senate and for Congress and for governor and attorney general or secretary of state this year found 
candidates who have pushed the falsehood that the 2020 election was stolen routinely saw their posts collect more engagement overall compared to the performances of each candidate's average post. Notice here, the review was done by a leftist news site and they only analyzed Republicans running for all of these offices. Again, why is it okay to demand that social media acts against a sitting party? They're talking about all Republicans. They're not even quiet about it. They're not even quiet. Those Republicans, why aren't every single one of them removed? We're talking to the tune of, you know, if you're going through Republican candidates, AG senators, probably, probably around 100 through all of them, maybe less. Who knows the exact number, but they're saying, get rid of my Republican counterpart here. They're hypocrites, they're freaking hypocrites. And they go on to urge Meta to recommit to focusing on election integrity year round while keeping Congress. You better tell us about your effort. Do as I say, or I will this. That's called tyranny. Then they go on to ask questions. Uh, and then there, of course, are the signers of the document. They don't like what happened over at Twitter and they want to make sure it doesn't happen over at Fakebook. Fakebook is going down the tubes anyway. I don't think it's going to last much longer. Bad news is, is Elon put a poll out and, and I really got a question. Was he drunk after the World Cup or whatever when he put this? I have no idea. Just saying stupid idea. I like Elon Musk. I don't support everything he does, but he put out a poll asking whether or not he should step down as CEO. Did he not think that leftist Twitters would flood the site in order to vote? Because they're the ones uh, that voted and I'm sure uh, they, they took the lead. Here we go. Elon Musk polled Twitter on whether he should step down as CEO. Most voters said yes. Most voters said yes. So in other words, I think it was 58% and 46 or 47, something like that percent so a lot of people said he should step down but that's because the twitter leftist trolls all jumped in on the action it was only a 12-hour poll i didn't even get to vote or see it many of you probably didn't but they honed in with their armies and bots to get in that poll and now he might very well step down as ceo which he said he will abide by the results hmm. that's insane completely and utterly insane. And I really pray to God that he doesn't. Elon, please don't. I, I'm just saying. I don't know. But we, we were making a big effort on free speech. And I hope you continue to make that effort and get rid of those little blacklist and delist on everybody's account. And, and uh, again, this is why I'm the size I am today and can't even get half the clicks I used to get because of the amount of blacklisting that happens here. And again, I can't stress it enough, but this is why I created RestrictiveRepublic.com. Um, I wanna encourage you, get to RestrictiveRepublic.com. And right now I'm gonna have this Christmas special. It's gonna go through Christmas, but uh, Christmas 22, we'll get it for $3.99 per month. I'm, I'm, uh, that's a losing thing for me because we have to pay to keep up the platform, but I've got all kinds of information that you really need to see on the site. That's really all I can say. But check it out on RestrictedRepublic.com to take advantage of that $3.99% month fee. Uh, use the code CHRISTMAS22. Anyhow, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven signing out.